so in this lecture we will know about next type of nonlinearity that is called the material nonlinearity so we have learned about geometric and contact nonlinearity and this is the third and last type of nonlinearity so in material nonlinearity as the name specifies we consider the nonlinearity behavior in the material in hyper mesh we have nonlinear elastic material we have hyper elastic material elastic perfectly plastic material then elastic time independent plastic material time dependent plastic material that is for the creep testing and strain dependent elasticity plasticity temperature dependent elasticity and plasticity so these are all different kinds of nonlinear materials out of this the nonlinear elastic and elastoplastic material generally we used in the for the metals hyper elastic is used for the rubber component and then we have some specific material depending on the specific requirement so in this course we will consider the elastoplastic material we consider the elastoplastic also the nonlinear elastic to define these types of nonlinearity we already know that we define a mat1 card when we define the property for the material along with this mat1 we are going to define the mat s1 for the nonlinearity so mat s1 is card is basically a kind of extension with mat s1 mat s1 card is not supported for the 1d element it is supported for 3d element it is not supported for the second order shell element kinematic hardening and mixed hardening are only supported for the solids so when you define the properties for the mat s1 card first of all we need to define a mat1 card and then it is going to show a table id so in this table id we define the curve between stress and strain then we have two option to define the plastic or nonlinear elastic and then we can define the work hardening slope then yield function hardening rule limits and type of strain in hyper mesh we can define the plasticity or material nonlinearity in two ways one is by using the plastic modulus curve so we know that we can define the nonlinearity here this is the material nonlinearity let's say the material nonlinear behavior is like this so this is a smooth curve here okay so in this curve you can see for the nonlinearity we consider up to this elastic zone this is strain and this is the stress so in case of nonlinearity we also consider this curve ahead of this elastic zone so this is the elastic zone and this is the plastic zone okay so in one way we can define a parameter that is called the h this is called the plastic plastic hardening so this is basically a ratio of et and et by e so et is basically the slope here you can see when we put a point here it is going to create a slope so this slope is for e and this is for et second one is let's say we can draw a curve between true stress and true strain so here we have true stress here we have true strain and this one is called the plastic strain and up to this point is called the elastic strain so when we consider a total here so plastic strain is equal to total minus elastic so here we can find the values so let's say this is an example of curve between true stress and true strain or we can say plastic strain for the material that is called the steel so now let's go to hyper mesh and understand how can we define this so in hyper mesh to define the material nonlinearity first of all we need to create a material make a right click create and then go to material here let's say this is steel okay so in steel we need to define all three properties this is young modulus e press enter click here that is poisson ratio then define the density here okay when we define all these three values it is it means it is a linear material but when we want to define the nonlinearity if we go to the downward here you will see mat s1 so there are multiple option here if you want to search for them in the hyper mesh help bar type in mat s1 and press enter okay so here you will see mat s1 make a check on this 
so in this mat as one it is going to show specified stress dependent and temperature dependent material properties so here we need to define a table that is table s1 make a right click here and open the link then we need to define plastic or nonlinear elastic material and then we need to define h y f and all these parameters you can read about them one by one so let's go to hypermesh and here you will see the h curve that is the h curve we can define and here you can see the nonlinearity curve okay so now let's go to hypermesh so when we turn on this mat s1 card here let's say i will go to mat s1 make a check on this here you will see it is going to show here you will see it is asking a table tid that is table id okay it means we need to define a table right now you can see we have not created any table so to create the table make a right click go to load collector define that is this is a curl between stress and strain give it name stress strain curve here in the card image go to table and search for the table s1 here table s1 this is table s1 so in this table s1 we need to define number of points so let's go to the our example here you can see we have two four six total number of point click on six insert value six here press enter then click on this data so this data in this data the x value is basically strain values and y is the stress so we just need to insert all these values one by one let's say this is zero this is 200 this is 240 and 0.0235 this is 240 so once you put up all these values let's say this is 0.18 and this is 400 so all six values are inserted click on close so now once again go to steel material here and here go to this material mat s1 click on this tid we now we have a table id that is for the stress strain curve click on this click ok after that we need to select the type so in this we have elastoplastic or hyperelastic. So I'm going to select the elastoplastic. Now we are not going to define the method of H here. So leave it blank. In the YF. So if you go to the information. Here you will see that this YF is basically the yield function point. Means when we insert the value 1 here. It is going to select 1 meses. For 2 it is principal stress. Means 1 meses is used when we have a ductile material. And maximum principle is used when we have a brittle material so steel is ductile material i will insert value 1 here now here you will see one more values that is called a limit 1 so in this limit 1 either we can leave it blank or we need to define the first point of the curve so here the first point of the curve is 200 we need to insert this value so this is 200 okay this is 200 here press enter then type strain so here let's go to the information so type of strain use means at the x-axis whether we have defined the total strain or the plastic strain here we have selected the plastic strain so insert value 1 here so here insert value 1 click on this arrow select insert value 1 okay so in this way you can see we have defined the material nonlinearity for the elastoplastic material